Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to show you how to create three separate layers, each containing the hue, saturation and luminosity information, which means you can then edit those separately. So here we've got the final article just to show what happens. It's in some groups within groups here, but you end up with hue, saturation and luminosity. So if I alt click those, you can see what they look like. So alt click the hue there. You can see what I've got here is a fully saturated image, um, which looks rather odd. You might wonder how you're going to get to it. But if, if you I'll click on the saturation, this is going to be used as a saturation mask effectively or a control layer. So it starts off from that maximally saturated hue layer and pulls down the saturation to the, the destination where you want to be. And then alt oh, luminosity here. We can see this is the kind of traditional black and white layer on which you can use for sharpening and so on. So let's do a bit of control on this. Let's go to the one up here. We're working on the hue layer here. So we can, for example, go to selective color and say, I'd like to take this building here and make it more red. So I start from the reds here. So it does a sort of selection start off with before you do anything of the reds. And then so I can control these. It's got orange here and orange is made up of red and greens. So you have to do a bit of RGB thinking. And so if I want to make it more red, I've got to turn down the greens. And then magenta is the opposite of green in this because we don't have RGB here. We have CMYK. So if I turn up the magenta, I'll be turning down the green, which lets the reds come through more and the building gets redder. And if I go the other way, the building gets more yellow because going the other there, I'm turning up the green effectively, which means it's more overpowering the red. The red's not effectively being changed there. And so it looks more yellow. So I got that kind of control. On the saturation layer, this is very interesting because if I pick a brush, yeah, a low opacity, moderate hardness, and if it's white, then if I alt click on this layer again, in here, remember where it's dark, the show there's low saturation. So if I painted white over here, I'd make it more saturated. So let's try that here, still painting on the saturation layer. So I paint on here. And I bring back the saturation and I can paint you know, more and more on that and I can bring things back. And it's, it's almost magical the way that it does this. You know, I can put a bit more lighter the color into that and I can switch to black and do the opposite. So up here, it's a bit saturated. So I can paint down here and decrease the saturation. So I've got full saturation control there. And you can use all of the other adjustment lay layers and filters on this as well to do all kinds of things. And then the luminosity layer, this is the more traditional one where you do things like noise reduction and sharpening. So if I just zoom into this up here, say, and go and do a live filters and high pass. Looks funny, of course, but that means I've got to change the blend mode here to one of the contrast modes. So I'll use linear light. Um, don't need to click on the monochrome because the layer itself is already black and white. And if I turn up the radius, you can see it very sharply, you know, quickly sharpens, but without any halos. It's pretty good at that. So let's click on the HSL layer here and delete it. And we're going to explain how it all works. I'm going to go over here I'm going to explain all this, but to do that, I'm going to take these off and we'll come back to that one step at a time. So initially we have here a one pixel and every pixel is going to be different like this, a certain amount of red, a certain amount of green, a certain amount of blue. But going from naught to one, which is the same as 100%, in an 8-bit model, it will be 255. In a 16-bit model, it'll be 65535, but it's jolly handy, particularly in sums, to be able to use go to naught to one, which makes things a lot easier to calculate and it will apply to whatever many bit depth you've got. So the color of this, you can sort of 
do it roughly here. So red is sort of high, red, is red, green is a bit low, and blue is somewhere in the middle. And you end up with this sort of plummy colour. So that's what that pixel would look like. Now then, what can we calculate or work out about this? Well, one of the things you can figure out is the maximum. And that's this here. And when we use apply image for this, you, there's a function in there. You can say, just find me the maximum and it'll do it for you. And unsurprisingly, you got the minimum as well. Now, this is actually quite handy because down here, you've got a, it's like a zone down here, which they've all got full value, if you like. And that's what can be, can be called the white zone. This zone in here is their varying. That could be called the color zone. And up here it is, none of them have any value. And that can be called the black zone. And those can be used in calculations. And we'll show you a bit of that shortly. So if I take, say, B here, lowercase b is the height of that, then this distance here is the full height, that amount of blue there, minus the minimum. So B minus minimum. Likewise, I can then calculate up here, this gap here, which is the maximum, all of that, taking away the bottom bit, the minimum. And that gives us a value for that. Now I can use these in determining HSL and creating HSL layers. So the hue layer, I'm taking, it's going to be this here, this B minus min, as a proportion of this whole one here. And what that does, this effectively will be, it'll show whether this colour here is sort of a quarter of it or, a, you know, 90% of it or whatever. And it also effectively will um, force one to a value of one, another colour to a value of zero, because this range here effectively comes naught to one. Then for the saturation, we're going to take this range here, which is the max minus the min, which is this. And when you work on this, you see that the smaller this is, the more gray it is, the wider this is, the more white it is, or oh, sorry, more the more saturated it is. Beg your pardon. So let's take an example with this color rectangle here. When we bring in the other colors, so the colors are close together, so we squeezed up the colours, it's getting more grey until it becomes grey when they're the same colour. And that can range from white to black, whether we're, you know, we're down the bottom or up the top. However, if we go the other way, if we pushed red up to one and green down to zero, which is what the hue calculation will do, we ended up with a saturated colour. And we know it's saturated because one of them is right up to the very top. And this is going to give that hue layer. So, but if we measure the gap, the distance between the maximum and the minimum, this also gives us the saturation. So between them, they can show the colour. Then, for the luminance layer, we're just going to take this bottom layer bit here. Because again, when it's white, they'll all be high, so you'll get a high amount. So this is a measure of whites. When it's getting towards black, dark, they'll all be low. So you'll get down to a lower level. And the calculations here, if I got hue times saturation, I'm effectively taking this one here, which has got this on the top, divided by this on the bottom. So it's imagine three quarters, three over four. And then we're multiplying by the same thing that's on the bottom. So three quarters times four, the fours cancel, and the answer is three. So multiplying them out, we get rid of that max thing. And then, if we want to get rid of that minimum to get back to this original blue value here, then we need to add the minimum in again, again. And the minimum is available here in the L layer. So by getting these three layers and then combining them with a multiply and an add, we get back to the original color, which is how we can have three layers and recombine and you still see the original picture. Let's do that. So control zero back out again here. And we'll do some calculation. First of all, we'll hit control J three times. 
one for hue. I'll rename the layers. So hue, saturation and luminosity. We'll go to the hue layer first and we want to do calculations on this. So we go to filters, apply image, click on use current layer as source and then equations. And then we need to put in the this long calculation here. So what this is going to be is we're going to open bracket here. SR minus minimum divided by the maximum minus the minimum. And the reason we got SR here, SR means source red and this is destination red, in other words, which means before and after. So this is you take the before, you calculate it, and you end up with what the red channel is going to contain afterwards. I'm going to control C to copy this. I'm going to paste it into the next one here so that I can just change the green and then paste it into the bottom there and just change the blue. And there I've got my saturated layer. Now I hit apply image. Notice this takes quite a long time to work because there's a lot of calculation going on in it. So I'm going to let it skip forward to the end. Right. So now we want the saturation layer, which is the maximum minus the minimum. So I'll turn that one off so we can see it. Go to the saturation layer. Go to a view. Sorry, no. Filters. That's it. Apply image. Use current layer as source, click on equations, and then we just want the maximum minus the minimum. And control C to copy that. And we want the same in all three of these because when they're all the same, then it's going to be a layer that is in black and white. And this gives us this saturation layer that we saw before. An apply image will take its time and we'll skip forward to the end. Right, there we go. Now I'll turn that one off and go to the bottom one. And for the luminosity one, an even simpler calculation, it's just the minimum. So we go to filters, apply image, use current layer as source, equations, and then have minimum. And we apply that to each of them. So we get a monochrome layer because red, green and blue are all the same and it's now a measure of the whiteness. So unsurprisingly, the darks are dark and the clouds up here are light. So now let's turn these back on again and combine them. So first of all, we wanted the hue times the saturation layer. So go to the hue layer, take the blend mode here and go down and there's a multiply and there you go we've got the hue and the saturation combined together there the sky is still dark but because we haven't got the lightness the luminosity information in yet so to get that i need to combine those two together hit Control g for a group i'll call that h and s just so i know what it is but now i need to take that h times s and add in the luminosity layer. So uh, from that, I can change the blend mode of the group through to add. And there's my original picture reconstituted, but with those three layers available. I can shift click the bottom there to uh, select all of them, hit Control G again, and call this HSL, which I can open up again and then edit those hue, saturation and luminosity layers separately. There we go. Hope that was fun and thank you very much for watching.